The last lesson is lesson three. For this, we have two-way tables. And what these are, are just a table that's meant to organize data in a more helpful way. So we're going to be using a lot of adding and subtracting to kind of figure out um, the information based off of what we are given. So we need to organize this. The first thing it says is that there are 150 children at a summer camp and 71 signed up for swimming. So with that first sentence, I see some information. There's a total of 150 children and 71 of them signed up for swimming. So that information can go right into our table. The total, our grand total, is 150 children, okay? 71 of them signed up for swimming. So we go to swimming, the total of swimmers is 71. What that means is, is now we can figure out if there were 71 swimmers, what, how many were not swimmers? And you can just do that through some subtraction, which is 79. So if 71 were swimming, then that means 79 were not swimming, okay? There were a total of 62 children that signed up for canoeing. So I go to canoeing. The canoeing total is 62, okay? If there were 62 canoers and a total of 150 students, how many of them were non-canoers? 88. Okay. But what about these boxes inside? We need to figure out where there are overlapping parts. So, there were a total of 62 children that signed up for canoeing. 28 of the canoers signed up for swimming. So that means there were 28 students or 28 children that did canoeing and swimming. That is the last piece of information. So we can figure out the rest of this. If there were a total of 71 swimmers, 28 of them canoed, I subtract to see that 43 of them did not canoe. Now let's look at it the other way. Canoers, there are a total of 62 of them, 28 of them swam, so how many of them did not? Let's subtract, 34. And for this last box, you have a couple of different options, all right? So if we have uh, 43 students that did not canoe but went swimming, but a total of 88 kids that did not swim, I can subtract 88 minus 43 to find that there were 45 kids that didn't canoe or swim. Well, that's boring, okay? So then we were only given one, two, three, four pieces of information. However, we now have nine pieces of data here, okay? So two-way tables are really helpful to kind of analyze the pieces into more specific groups, okay? When we effectively do that, we can then find relative frequencies. And relative frequencies are helpful because what it really does is it turns the data into percents. So when it says relative frequencies, that means we are finding the percent, okay? When we are finding these percents, the important part is to keep an eye on the total. But from the last example, you saw that we had totals along the bottom, but we also had totals along the side. So when we are doing these percents, it's important for us to make sure that we know which set of totals we're going to use. For this one, they told us that we need to do it by column, all right? Columns go up and down, and then that means that our other option is rows, and rows go side to side, okay? So if we are analyzing these by columns, then that means we're using the totals that are at the bottom of our column, okay? So for cell phone, they're saying we have 57 out of 70, okay? You put that in your calculator, top divided by bottom, and that is 0 0.81 and a bunch of stuff. But remember, we're looking for percentages, so you just multiply that by 100, and you get that it's approximately 81%, okay? So that is the relative frequency for cell phones and MP3 players. Continuing on, you have 13 out of 70 again. 
13 out of 70 is um, 0.19 if we round, so that's approximately 19%. And last but not least, in the bottom, it would be 70 out of 70, which we hope is 100, and we can double check this by doing 81 plus 19, which is 100%. Okay? We've got one more column to do. For here, we have 21 out of 30, which makes 0.7, which gives us 70%. And over here, we have 9 out of 30, 9 out of 30 which gives us 0.3, which is 30%. And again, the goal here is, well, we know it's 30 out of 30, but is 70 plus 30 100? Absolutely. Okay? So when we're doing our relative frequencies, that's when we are doing our percentages. Otherwise, we are filling out the tables with all of the data and we are organizing it as best we can. Okay? So these are kind of like puzzles. So you have to make sure that you're prepared to work backwards a little bit to find some of the missing pieces. I hope that's helpful. Try your best. Don't miss me too much.